I S U P K. Hey, Shalom, man. It's Priest Kevin in Doha with the I S U P K. And the Commander Journey in Holland, California, man. So, all blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You're going to learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Shalom. The Bible identifies you as the lost 12 tribe of the nation of Israel. Right. And in the year 2021, in the times that we're living in, there's nothing more important or necessary than for God's chosen people to find out the truth of who they are, where they come from, and what their purpose is here on the earth. And the brother that was just up here speaking was talking about the evil of the culture of America. We're going to continue with that theme. Tonight we're going to talk about the culture of America and how it is prophesied in the Bible. This society that we live in, the standards of these, that is, uh, the, this society, God prophesied it in the Bible. And it is an evil, horrible thing what has been allowed to propagate and to grow in this land called America. People in America, you think you're a good person if you're living like a good American. You, a lot of people are blessed and thankful to be in America, to have the freedoms that America grants them, to be able to live the life that America says you can be afforded. Well, God said it's evil, man, and he hates it. Right. You understand? Give me Jeremiah 28 and 8. Every week we come out here, Lord alive, wasn't permitting, and people walk up and down this street, they look at us like we crazy. Look at us like we strange. They look at these signs, they wonder, why they so mad? Why they so loud? They see the way we dress, and they wonder why they dress like that. The reason why you why we experience that is because you don't know what men of God look like. That's right. You've never seen men of God in your life until you walk by 7th and 8th right. on a Saturday and see the ISUPK. Right. You understand? You're never going to see men of God on your TV, never going to hear about them on your radio. That's why when you see us, you think that we're Muslims. You see us, you think that we're crazy when we men of God. Doing the job that men of God have always done. Which is to tell God's people, change their life and get themselves together. Get Jeremiah 28 and 8. And you know what else has always been around? As long as there have been men of God, they have always been agents of the devil. Anytime men of God come out to speak the truth, the devil don't want the truth to be heard. The devil want to put on a show. The devil want to steal your light. The devil hate when the word of God come out. But you know what? The word of God gonna come out anyway. Because the devil and his darkness can't stand in the way of the light of the most high. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 28 verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the prophets of God. The prophets of God that were before you in times past. The prophets of God that came before Jeremiah. The men you read about in this Bible, what kind of men were the prophets of God? Were they men that loved everybody? Did the prophets of God want to kiss you in the mouth and hold your hand and be your friend? You look at your TV, you look at the world today, you think men of God are soft and sweet and 
yes, brother, and yes, sister, and yes, go and vote. Right. And you should just let everybody live their lives, and love is love, and you understand? Right. You can't, you can't put a limit on who you love. All of that is garbage and nonsense. Right. It goes against God in this battle. That's right. You understand? That's soft for that you call a pastor or a spiritual leader. He's an agent of the devil. That's, right. That's why he's so soft and sweet and kind. Men of God were never soft. Men of God was never sweet. Why you think they killed Jesus Christ? Is it because he wanted to love everybody? Or because he demanded righteousness? He demanded you obey God. Being a man of God has always been something that people hated. Why? Because you know what people can You know what a, a sinful person can't stand more than anything? Their evil being reflected in a righteous man that they know they can't live up to. You understand? That's why the men in this Bible were always ostracized, always hated, because they stood for what was right. Read, Jer continue to read Jeremiah 28 and 8. Verse 8, the prophet that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms. Jeremiah said the prophets prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms. Right. We come out here today, the men of God do nothing different. We prophesy against the evil of America. We warn you of death and destruction that's coming because you refuse to obey God. And y'all look at us like we crazy. Look at us like we strange. Because you've never seen men of God. Read. Of war and of evil and of pestilence. The men of God have always warned of war, warned of evil, warned of pestilence. And we living in perilous times, black people. If you don't see the writing on the wall, God is destroying this place. Right. Coronavirus, the economy is failing, no jobs, God is bringing America down. That's right. But God is giving you time to fix yourself, to change your life. Y'all thought America was going to go on forever, didn't you? You thought America was just going to, you was going to ride off into the sunset. I remember being young, growing up, and, and having dreams and hope of the life that I could have in America. Then I got about 18, 19 and really realized, oh, I'm a nigga in America. Right. Then I got a little bit older, tried to do the college thing, got a good job, made some money. Then I realized, well, damn, you need credit to do this. Right. And it takes having being able to get a loan to do that. And I realized I'm a black man in America. This place ain't set up for me to win. Right. This place ain't set up for me to succeed. Then I went to search for what is the purpose then? What is there for me to have in this world? And I found this school and these brothers teaching on this corner. And you know what they taught me? That the only life that's worth living is a life that's dedicated to obeying God. But the culture of America stands in the way of that. Right. The culture of America will have you aspiring to be everything that God said is disgusting and evil. And that is what we're going to talk about tonight. Drop that. Let me get 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read in the Bible what it means to be a good American. You in 2021, this Bible was written thousands of years ago. You didn't know God talked about America. You didn't know God talked about the life that you were going to be living in 2021. Well, we're going to get it to you right here. Listen to how God lays out what it means to be a good American. Let's go ahead and read. You understand? Come. What you're hearing on this corner, you're not going to hear it nowhere else. You're never going to hear this in a sermon in your church. Right. You're never going to hear this broken down on, you understand, whatever uh, non-denominational uh, religion that you subscribe to. The truth of the Bible can only be taught by the men of God. And the men of God in today's generation are only in the ISUPK. That's right. So unless you're being taught by a priest in the ISUPK, you're not going to be able to understand God on this Bible. And I challenge anyone, if you think that what we're saying is wrong or what we're saying is not true, just bring your evidence, bring your questions, bring your pastor, bring your tutelage and your knowledge and whatever astute observations you've been able to make in life, and we'll show you that what God said in this Bible is the only thing that's true. 2 Timothy chapter 1, what did I say we started? Verse 13, 15, hold up, bear with me. It's the second, hold, hold up. 
2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Read. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. The Bible said, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Right. What are these perilous times are like? What are they like? What are the people who are perilous? How are they living? Let's find out what the Bible says about these perilous times that were promised to come at the end. Read. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. The Bible said in the perilous times, men would be lovers of, them all, of their own selves. What does that mean? That men would place themselves over everything that matters. And when it says men, it's talking about people in general, not just the male species. It's talking about men and women. But the Bible said in the last days, in these perilous times, people would put themselves over God. We know. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. The Bible said that the people in this time would be covetous. What does it mean to be covetous? To be covetous means you want what other people have. You see somebody else got something and you want it and you're willing to do anything to have it. That's what it means to be covetous. You understand? To be proud means what? To be boasters means what? You think that you've accomplished everything. You look at the things you have in life, look at your material possessions, and you think that makes you great. The Bible says that people in this time would also be blasphemers, meaning what? What does it mean to blaspheme? It means to be greatly disrespectful to God. What's greatly disrespectful to God? Worshiping things that are not God. Putting your trust and your belief in things that have nothing to do with your reason for being on this earth. God said these things would come in the perilous times. Read. Disobedient to parents. The Bible said that the people in these perilous times would be disobedient to parents. Let's keep reading. Unthankful. Unholy. They would be unthankful and unholy. What is another way of saying you unthankful? You are unappreciative. People in this time that we're living in, they do not appreciate the life that God gave them. They don't appreciate the, the, the situations and the circumstances that God has allowed them to escape from, how do you know? Because if you appreciated God and were thankful, you would do what he said to do. You would live the way he said to live. But let me keep on reading. Now we're going to get into some of the meat and potatoes of this perilous times and these people who God warned about. Read. Verse 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. He read. Verse 4. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. These are the people that God said would be on the earth in the perilous times. And we're going to read this over from the top. And as we go through them one by one, I'm going to show you that what the Bible is describing is Americans in 2021. It's the Western culture in 2021. What this society and civilization is training you to be is what God said would come in the perilous times of the end. So let's go back to the top. We're going to Jeremiah. I'm mean, sorry, it's lucky. Second Timothy chapter three. We're going to go to verse two. All right. Read. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Now, what is God describing here when he talks about these people that would come in these perilous days? When the Bible says that men should be lovers of, them own, of their own selves, God is talking about people who don't value their own life or don't value the life that God gave them, but they value the life that they, that they feel like they're supposed to have. You understand? When God talks about someone that is a coveter, meaning you see somebody else get something and you want it and you're willing to do whatever it takes to get it. 
When he talks about someone being proud, talks about someone being a blasphemer, meaning you don't, you don't care what anybody else has to say about what's right or what's wrong. You don't care about what's right and what's wrong. You only care about what you think. You only care about what you want. To be a blasphemer, again, means you're worshiping things that go against God. You're making things in your life matter that, that God said you should not have in your life. All of this is the culture that we've been given in America through social media. All of this is the culture that you've been given in America, you understand, through all of the entertainment and the programming that your oppressor has put for you in this society. You understand? You know, the people who are lovers of themselves in today's society are the people who look at social media and look at the TV and think that that's the life they're supposed to have. You understand? You want to know why there's young black men out here that's growing up in this city that's full of riches and wealth, but they in poverty and they're struggling. You want to know why they sell drugs, why they commit crimes? Because they want to be like the people on TV. Right. They love themselves more than they love God. They can't stand the idea, the thought of just being a nigga in America. We can't stand the thought and the idea of struggling and barely getting by, you understand, with our nine to five, having enough money to pay our bills and to be able to just have the nice, the little bit of things that we can afford. No, in this society, everybody want to be a baller, man. Everybody want to stunt. Everybody want to wear designer clothes that they can't afford. Everybody want to have the new fly thousand dollar shoes. You understand? But that culture is what causes you to sin and go against God. There was, was a time where a woman could just be a woman. She'd be herself and be unique and be pretty. But now, not in this society. You on social media and you tied into what this world is programming you to be. Every woman want to be a stripper. Every woman want to be a hoe. Every woman want to be like what they seeing on TV. You understand? You got black women in 2021 talking about they want a man to buy them a Birkin bag. What the hell is a Birkin bag when you working a nine to five and barely getting by paying your rent and your bills? A Birkin bag is something that you ain't supposed to have in your life. But when you, you understand, you can get a Birkin brick. You understand? But why people, why do people stress themselves out? You understand? But over the, over the material things that this world has to offer. Because they are covetous. They are lovers of themselves. You understand? They're blasphemers. What makes you a blasphemer? You celebrating Christmas, celebrating Thanksgiving, celebrating the 4th of July, being in the truth and not done these things for years. I talk to people in the world about Christmas. You know how stressful this time of year is on a brother or a sister in the world? You barely getting by as it is. Now you gotta go buy presents for the kids. Now you gotta go buy a PlayStation and buy damn toys. And, and I don't even know if kids get bicycles no more. Now you gotta buy a kid a skateboard that he ain't even got a skate on. He just stand on the skateboard and lean forward and he drive. Guess how much that costs? A quarter of your rent. New cell phone, new uh, Apple watches. You understand? All of these things that this society promotes are things that take you away from God. You understand? These people that God is describing are those of us who are living in the culture of America in 2021. You understand? Let's read verse, let's read verse three. Oh, God. Verse three, without natural affection. You know the people on this earth who are without natural affection? That's talking about your sexual deviance, man. I roll with warriors and them garments be looking glorious Feel like 20 sets of fists hitting you but it's four of us They always scream squad but loyalty just mean more to us Let the 40s bust when it's time unleash the hunters I done seen stand up niggas turn into runners Niggas with weak right hooks turn into gunners Soldiers in abundance marching in by the hundreds We don't hold no punches we letting them go in bunches Crawled up out the dungeons and now we do it humongous Waiting on a hater to flex we doing lunges Rappers better give me respect, this be punished Really, I don't worry about credit or where it's due Just know your favorite rapper told it I'm number two Camp full of animals like I'm running the zoo 
Call me Tyler Warhol, either call me the Jew. Shit, you can call me the king, I'm ready to rule. Only sharks swim here, rappers get out the pool. Only real spitters can wait in this type of water. A renaissance coming, we cutting your time shorter. You had a good while to get your fares in order.